Yo, yo, yo. Alright, so I'm sitting in my kitchen having another reason in my spirit. Yeah. And you might hear some uh, some noise in the background. To my neighbours, my neighbours on smoke tonight. <laughs> they ain't no going to sleep. Playing decent tunes, so you know. I'm getting my black for for the moment. But I'm sitting in my kitchen contemplating on energy, right? The law of vibrational energy. And um, when you delve into what energy is from a scientific perspective, right? A lot of it is being referred to what is known as electromagnetism, right? That spirit in the scientific world. And so, just contemplating on energy, right? And how when you study indigenous cultures and um, various spiritual schools of thought, energy seems to be at the center, regardless of what this energy is called. Right, you know, whether it's called Sakem, uh, whether it's called, you know, Shakti, whether it's called Chi, whatever it's called, there seems to be a, a, a central focus on what we define as energy, right? And ultimately, what you will find is that these indigenous schools of thought would attribute this energy to this concept of oneness right this 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 one universal field of energy and so understanding that these cultures had a a significant interest in this energy which they understood governed this physical existence right and so you know, that famous equation that they say, you know, Albert Einstein found out when, you know, it was a, a well-known understanding, which is E equals MC squared. Energy is matter. Matter is energy. You can't be speaking about the oneness and think that spirit and the physical selves are, you know, two separate things. They are they have their polarities but the duality the separation of them was never something that these ancient ancient cultures um kind of had the belief in you know and so I'm trying to keep my train of thought and so looking at this energy and understanding that there was a, a real focus on energy I wanted to understand how the utilization of energy um, was gone about. You know, you hear stories of these ancient civilizations with these, you know, ancient technology that far surpasses, far surpasses um, our our current understanding of technology and what you know what's 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 possible, the possibilities, and so. Understanding, on this, well, having an interest in that, I wanted to know, okay, how, how, how did they utilize this information? How did they utilize energy, you know? And understanding that, you know, that was essentially technology is based around energy. You know, energy and technology are one and the same. Technology is that which you create in order to utilize the forces of nature i would say right and so what was the the, the technology of old since it seems to be superior you know everything that they find finding out right now in quantum physics and quantum mechanics and all of this shit is old school information <laughs> you know old school information 
And so, I've, I've been, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still following the thought. So I'm, I'm asking this question, sitting in my kitchen and understanding right now how I work with spirit, how I communicate uh, is having conversations with self, you know, talking to self, you know, because according to, according to our, our, our ancient wisdom, know thyself was the game that was the the one thing that was left behind you know know thyself and so speaking to self is anyway so i'm pondering on the question and the concept of electromagnetism popped up right because like i mentioned electromagnet electromagnetism is is how we kind of quantify what spirit is is how we relate to spirit from a scientific perspective but then within our current understanding electro electricity and magnetism are two opposite things right or in the scientific on uh, in, in in the communities they understand this is one thing you know is it's essentially energy and how energy moves right and therefore you know you can't you can't have electricity without having magnetism and vice versa in order to producing and creating the opposite polarity and so understanding that this 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 thing that governs all things down here, right? The law of vibrational energy is speaking about understanding the electromagnetic field, right? Understanding the energy that permeates all things in existence and what governs that, you know? Again, L-O-V-E, love. And so understanding that, we understand that Love was an ancient technology, right? I'm going to share something which I came across, which was um, quite dope. And it was speaking about how these, if you look at electrical signals, the image, right? The image of different electrical frequencies and so forth. A lot of them look like ancient shit, uh, sigils or symbols. One in particular is the vive, the vives or the veves of, of Haiti, right? If you look at them with a, you you kind of have to uh, let go of logic here in order to make connections you know there's truths that 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 can only be uh only can be embodied by the heart it, it can't be grasped by the logical mind right and so when you look at these symbols and you look at these electrical uh, symbols you can kind of see there's a connection between the two right and so there was this post i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna share which was showcasing in images the different symbols in different cultures and how similar they look to different electrical uh, symbols that we use today. And so kind of going back a bit in regards to what we were speaking about earlier, energy, right? And how energy how we kind of explore energies through electromagnetism, right? And primarily through this concept of electricity, right? Or this frequency of electricity. Electricity governs, you know, everything in existence, including your own physical bodies. You know, you are a, a, an electrical being. But again, having an understanding that magnetism is the polarity of and so therefore the connected, you are the electromagnetic being. 
right? And how we interface with that. Remember, we, we only perceive 5% of this electromagnetic energy, right? What we observe is something called the visible, the visible spectrum, the spectrum of light, or what we think is light, because it's all light. When you look at the whole electromagnetic scale, from UV rays to X rays to things that cannot even be named, are all forms of light, but physically, we only pick up on a small percentage. And that's because our physical cells are connected to our ego-based consciousness, right? Which is only able, is only capable of perceiving a small percentage. So just by, just by the alone, we are we are kind of handicapped when we are trying to perceive all that there is through an ego based consciousness, a, a, which is connected to your logical perception of the world. You understand what I'm saying? All of this I teach in class in in more depth, right? Because just exploring that concept of the electromagnetic spectrum. It, it connects to a lot of things, but I kind of want to, I want to kind of stay on, on the flow of the wave I was going in, but you know, sometimes spirit has, yeah, so I wanted to know how this energy was utilized and how you utilize and understanding that these deities, these gods, these angels were archetypes on working with energy yeah working with energy they were describing a methodology on how to utilize this particular frequency or energy for x y and z the same way we utilize electricity or uh, electricity or energy now to power this whatever it is nowadays everything everything my tv my microwave my whatever you understand what i'm saying my light is the utilization of electricity and so again i wanted to understand having an understanding that these ancient civilizations wasn't handicapped by their ego-based consciousness the reason why there was they're considered high civilizations is because they were utilizing a consciousness that goes beyond their limitations, go beyond their five senses. Do you understand what I'm saying? They was tapping, tapping in into spirit, but not, not in the way we understand, because again, I wanted to know how they used it rather than our understanding, because our understanding is very spooky. Do you understand what I'm saying? very spooky is 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 our understanding of spirituality is not usable right therefore it renders it not spiritual spiritual is that which is spiritual is that which you can use <laughs> you done no. you understand <laughs> Yeah, man, and switch it. Yeah, man. So, it's, it's you. You have to be able to use it, but not just use it from our our limited base understanding, right? What I'm saying is, there's 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 work to be done to overcome self to be able to even connect with self. Like there's levels to the game, rather than just a profession. The, the the professing of X, Y, and Z, you know. So I wanted to know how these men utilized Kundalini energy, Shakti energy. What was the Tantra sciences and how was it utilized? And so these, these, these are the things I was pondering on, on. And then, bam, I come across that information about the sigils 
representing electrical signals and there was an aha moment right there was an aha moment because my i guess my inner my my true self which you could say my inner self understands how to how to manipulate energy or utilize energy however you want to frame it and so coming across that gain you know added further insight and understanding how i would play with that now yeah you know beyond just a logical breakdown of yeah this is what this is okay and how do you do it now right how do you do it and believe it or not people can tell you how to do it but you you wouldn't even hear it <laughs> you know you wouldn't even hear it hence why they say in the Kabbalion that the 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 lips of wisdom are sealed except to the ears of understanding right this secret that people think the the so-called illuminati are hiding is 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 untellable it's, it's not a secret in a sense that's keeping it from you it's it's a it's a knowing right it's it's a knowing and so a school of thought in in these indigenous cultures was to then go about the process of knowing and they came up with the understanding that the best way to know is to also know what you don't know in other words in order to know thyself you have to know what isn't self yeah and within that lies shadow work is is it's yes you are peeling back the layers of your humanity but you're doing so in order for your true spirituality to come online you understand what I'm saying? Your 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 spirituality to come online and it's it's not to say it, it it isn't already online because it is, but there's something blocking the signal. Right? There's something blocking the signal, and that something is you. <laughs> right? You are blocking the signal. But the reason why that's a hard pillow to swallow is because we've become so identified with the illusionary self. So when the illusionary self is questioned now, remember how your, your inner child works, your, sub, your subconscious mind works, is there to protect you. And anything that threatens your self, your so-called self-identity, your I-ness, your ego, Oh, all defenses go online, right? And so this concept of death that I keep on speaking about and how everybody is going to have to die, I mean, it's inevitable on the physical level, right? <laughs> Everyone must die. Well, let's apply the law of correspondence as above, so below, right? And so a lot of uh, indigenous cultures would focus on the process of this concept of of death, you know, all the way back. I mean, you can, you can find it in ancient Egypt all day, every day. It seemed that like that became the number one practice was was death, how to die. You know, so what I'm saying, big up to the OG, but the panic, you know, you lay down that science expertly. <laughs> yeah, boy. And so, um this death i speak about it a lot from a sufi perspective because the sufi perspective it it is very poetic in the sense that it it uh it soothes you while it slowly destroys you right in order to find the real you so what so while you're going through the process of death, there's this sweet poetic essence that holds you, you know, 
and assists one to continue on their journey into the abyss without grasping. You get me? So I used that school of thought because it was one that my my heart was drawn to. But then also because I'm 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 harsh in some other areas, it allows to bring the balance of of how I <laughs> how I deliver this information. You know, there was a, a particular point where and still is fuck you niggas you know it's you either get this or you don't the game is know thyself get on with it <laughs> as much as you know that is 100% truth I understand as a teacher that might be a hard pill to swallow not that I give a damn. If you can't swallow the pill, then you don't get the medicine, so to speak. Do you understand what I'm saying? But at the same time, because I understand how the human condition works, there's a natural... I understand how the human condition works because I understand how my human in con, human condition worked. Therefore, I was able to develop compassion for myself. I'm able to project that to others now in a sincere way rather than a way that, you know, is already portrayed so you come back next week and buy another product. Do you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> and so I use different schools of thought to portray certain levels of the game. You understand what I'm saying? But ultimately, this is on you you know this is this is your journey and the ultimate realization for myself is realizing that you've already done the journey (laughs) you know you've already won and you have to be steeped in love in order to fully comprehend that not just the love that we understand on a human emotional level but more so from a universal concept, which is the law of vibrational energy, L-O-V-E, that which governs all things. So regardless, you understand what I'm saying? Regardless, this whole thing is governed. You understand? So I'm going to leave this one here. I hope I touched on something. Hope something resonated. But I will be going into more of the connection between symbols and energy, right? Which is also connected with symbols and sound, which is also connected with form and formation. The law of vibrational energy works in those particular ways, right? the energy field, which is also connected to the science of sound, music, vibration, light, energy, all of this are various stages of vibration. So when you understand L-O-V-E, you're fucking with it all 